and we are both live on Facebook and Zoom because I see the first very punctual participants. So hello everyone and welcome. Today we have another very special and interesting webinar uh, with our special guests from universities. As you know, we have two universities presenting today. So feel free to ask your questions regarding the programs, re regarding studying in Germany. Eileen and I will be really happy together with all the people you see on your screen to help you. Uh, so before we start, I would like to briefly uh, introduce myself um, and then I will hand it over to Eileen and we will start with the presentation. So for those who are joining us for the first time, my name is Nino. I am a consultant at Magerman University uh, and I am really happy to share my own experience about studying and working in Germany. So um, yeah. I'm at your disposal regarding the questions and suggestions or advices. And now I would like to ask Eileen to please um, present herself and my German university. And then right away, we start with the main topic of today's, which is mechatronics and systems engineering. Thank you very much, Nino. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you to our special guests from um, German universities who can help you guys with some very um, useful information. Uh, as you know, uh, my German university is Germany's largest database of English thought study programs. Uh, currently, we have more than 2,200 programs in English, and this includes bachelor's and master's program. Uh, so when you come to our website, this is the first thing you see. It's a short version of our study finder, but if you click uh, here upper on uh, study finder, you will find the extended version where you can apply lots and lots of filters according to your interests and your qualifications to find the perfect programs for you. Uh, besides uh, our study finder, we also uh, have more than 70 comprehensive articles published. Uh, not only in English, but also there are translations uh, in Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, Russian, and Italian. Um, so here you can get a lot of useful information, uh, not only about um, uh, study related subjects, but also living in Germany and how to get a visa and everything. Um, and also links to uh, external resources that you will need in the process of applying, not only to a university placement, but also to apply for a visa or a residence permit. So make sure you don't forget to check out uh, the articles um, that we have on our website. And as you know, we have a weekly uh, live webinars. Uh, today, like Nino said, is a subject specific webinar with uh, special guests to give you an insight from um, within the higher education system. Uh, but we also have more general webinars about application strategies, COVID-19 updates, uh, scholarships in Germany, uh, how to apply via UniAssist, how to apply for a visa, and much more. So make sure you check out our webinars page and you register for all the webinars that you would like to learn more about. Uh, it's all for free. And... We are very proud to be an international team. We have people based not only in Germany, but like Nino said, I'm in Brazil. There are people who live in China, people who live in Spain and so on. Uh, and we are a startup and uh, based in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, but like I said, we have an international team of counseling in English, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, uh, Italian and also now uh, Chinese. Uh, so we are very proud of that. And uh, even though we have a university in our name, we are not a university. So uh, we cannot give you a placement into a program or uh, a scholarship. So we are just um, uh, an organization, a startup 
whose mission is to help international students in their uh, journey to study in Germany. And I guess that's it on my side. Um, I will be answering your questions in the Q&A section. And um, if you have questions on Facebook, you can leave them in the comments and one of us will get uh, back to you. And if you have questions specifically to a study program, uh, then please um, specify in the question uh, who you are directing the question to, because this will help us a lot. Uh, and also pay attention to the chat because I'll be sending lots of important links for all of you guys. And now I'll give the floor to Nino and to our special guests. I hope you all enjoy the webinar and um, I'll go to the background now. Thank you very much, Eileen, for telling all the details and for giving such an information to our, our attendees. So from my side, uh, I would add just a bit uh, regarding studying mechatronics and systems engineering in Germany generally. So as you see from other screen, uh, we have two universities and three special guests today. Today's first speaker will be Stephanie Lieg from uh, presenting mechatronics and cyber physical systems uh, from the Gentop Institute of Technolo Technology. We also have Professor Dr. Raphael Ruf, who will be talking about another master programs for, uh, from about mechatronics. So stay with us and please pose uh, as many questions as you wish so that next year uh, or um, in upcoming year, you are at one of these universities start to, uh, continuing with your masters. Regarding the uh, subject itself, so in order to find a specific program about mechatronics or system engineering, you can use two databases. Eileen has already shown you our database, which you can also see in my background or our background. However, there is another um, database as well, which is called Hochschule's Compass, which is offered by German Rectors Conference. And uh, they have a um, database mostly for German uh, programs. However, there are still some English of them. So you can see that if you go to Hochschule Compass, Eileen uh, will post the link to it. Uh, and if you write mechatronics and systems engineering, you will find 275 degree programs, majority of which is taught in English. However, there are also some uh, in German, sorry. However, there are also some uh, programs in English with the number of which is 22. Uh, if you are the one uh, like Eileen and me and want to study in English in Germany, then you better use our um, study finder, uh, which is called My German University slash study finder. And you can find here 57 degree programs for mechatronics and system engineering. And you can, if you remember, the other number was 22. So we have more programs and our database in terms of English study programs is more comprehensive. Uh, we even have a divide for you because uh, while um, Eileen was presenting my German university, um, they were, uh, there was a question regarding bachelor and uh, master's programs. So in our study finder, you can also divide it. There are 11 bachelor's programs for mechatronics and system engineering and 46 a master's program. And regarding English only, it means that sometimes um, some courses offered uh, by universities are um, kind of hybrid. So they have English and German um, modules. Uh, and in this case, if you click no German skills needed, you will get English only programs, which you can also see in our study finder and on the slide as well. If you are the one who is just starting the journey and wants to know more about mechatronics systems engineering at all, regarding the ranking, tuition fees, applications, language requirements, and so on, and is not sure which university or which program is better uh, for you, then you, uh, we would recommend to visit our subject page because we have all this information there accumulated and like written so that it's easier to find a specific program, university, and so on. 
So we will share the link to our subject page in chat as well. However, I have mentioned um, ranking uh, in the um, in previous slide, but we would uh, highly recommend to create your own rank for universities because you are the one who knows best which university is the best for you or which study program is the best for you. Of course, international rankings are highly appreciated and they are taken into account. But in this specific case, our advice would be to be to create your own ranking and um, list the universities according to that. By the way, we will also publish some articles about different international rankings so you know which one can be useful for you. Um, Another thing that we would like to mention is about university types in Germany. And roughly speaking, there are two university types. It's universities or technical universities um, and universities of applied science. So uh, both of them have, uh, specific, like, have courses, degree courses for mechatronic systems engineering. In case of universities and technical universities, there are 21 programs. Um, and for universities of applied sciences, there are 26 programs in this subject. And you can see the list here. Why we have mentioned this and why is this division uh, or should this division taken, uh, should be taken into account? Uh, is the following. So more or less the same, they are the same. However, um, the main difference is about the teaching style, so to say. Uh, for in case of universities, um, they are mostly theory oriented or research oriented. In case of universities of applied sciences, it's more, they are mostly uh, practice uh, oriented. Uh, there was a small difference about PhD programs, which is not the case anymore because universities of applied sciences do have uh, do offer PhD programs um, recently. Uh, and one last thing before uh, I finish with my part is about the uh, wording of a study program when you are searching for mechatronic systems engineering. Uh, it's not necessarily called word by, word by word the same uh, the same way. So it can be called engineering sciences. In parentheses, we have mechatronics, computational me mechanics, robotics, and so on. So if you uh, choose a filter in our study finder, we have a special section of mechatronic systems engineering. It will give you all possible options that include this or that module connected to the uh, study program you will be uh, searching for. All right, so this was all from my side. Uh, right now, I would like to give the floor to our first speaker, who is Stefanie Ligl, and um, she will be presenting the master program in mechatronic and cyber uh, physical systems. Uh, you can have the international outlook of the university on the left side uh, on the slide, and you can see the map so that you can locate your next destination on the map as well in Germany. Um, and yeah, I will stop sharing my screen right now, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Nini, for the nice um, introduction. Um, I'm Stephanie from the Deckendorf Institute of Technology. Um, I teach intercultural studies as well as rhetorical skills uh, at CALM campus, which is basically um, a further research institution and a teaching institution of the DIT. And I will present um, the Master Mechatronical Systems uh, program to you today. So I'm just going to share uh, my screen with you for starters. Hope you can uh, see the screen. Okay, basically, um, the Director of Studies is Professor Wittmann, who I'm representing today. Um, and what's important to know is about Deckendorf first, is that we are the most research-oriented university in Bavaria. Um, we have a unique concept of research uh, and technology campuses. At the moment, we have 11 of those and seven research institutes as well. Um, basically, I will show you a brief overview about our um, research uh, facilities later. 
We are also um, one of the most international universities of Bavaria because uh, we have uh, between 20 and 30 percent of our students are international, um, which is uh, over 100 nations at the moment. And on Campus Calm, where I'm working at, we also have around 25 different nations on campus and about 80 percent of them are international as well. Um, we also have the European campus, Rotal Inn, which uh, only teaches uh, English study programs exclusively. And we have a wide range of uh, partner universities throughout the world as well. Basically, um, these are some of the events we have uh, set up in the past few years. So basically, on Deckendorf main campus, there has been Taste the World. Um, and on Calm campus, we had the traditional day where our students basically wore their traditional attire, which was really nice to look at and was a wonderful sunny day. Here you can see the overview of our research facilities and um, the, your, the opportunity you have when you are a student of the DIT is that you can also benefit from each of these technology campuses because they all have a different field of research. And if you want to do your master thesis in one or the other topic, it's best to contact the professors uh, leading uh, this and that technology campus. So basically, I'm going to start off uh, on the left hand side, we have Weissenburg with uh, plastic components as their major. Uh, Passback Lupberg is focused on digital production. The Campus Cam is focused on mechatronics and automation. Then we also have a neighboring health campus uh, focusing on digital health topics. We have Teisnach, which has uh, two uh, um, facilities basically. One is focused more on towards uh, sensor technology and the other one on industry 4.0, precision processing as well as measurement technology and high frequency technology. Then we got um, Spiegelau, which is focused on glass technology, Grafenau with digitalization, artificial intelligence as well as big data. Freyung is focused on um, applied computer science and bionics. Putzum is focused on simulation and Plotling uh, stands for modern mobility. And CAM um, is a specialty because it's not just a research institution focused on mechatronics, but also a teaching institution. And the European campus where the uh, English programs are taught and uh, the Deckendorf Institute itself. There are also some additions uh, we will have in the coming few years um, with TC Philsufen, which is focused uh, onto digital security, so to recognize uh, threats in the World Wide Web uh, while surfing, while um, conducting research. There are many IT threats uh, we need to detect uh, and we need to react against. So this campus is focused on that one. And Oberschneiding is the startup campus focusing on um, promoting startups amongst our students, basically. Um, now you may wonder, uh, Kam is a very small town, so why would you want to study in Kam? Basically, um, the technology campus Kam is a hidden champion because we have uh, state of the art equipment. We have uh, 3D printers uh, which can uh, print metal for example, which can print with liquids. So it's very unique. And um, I will show you a brief overview of our um, laboratory facility as well. Um, our teaching methods are very innovative, um, as well as you get a close uh, contact towards your lecturers, because we only have very small uh, group sizes, which allows you to contact your lecturer very fast. You don't need to wait for three weeks to get a reply but you will get a reply very soon and you will see each other in the hallways. No one is anonymous, but everyone is familiar. Um, the study content is also in tune with the times. We try to adapt to those times. We also have a new study program in terms of artificial intelligence. Um, also, there are very moderate living expenses uh, that await your income um, in comparison to uh, big cities like Munich, Nuremberg. Um, and also, you just need to pay 62 euros per semester for the student union fee, and that's it. 
So uh, that's also very cheap because uh, myself, I studied in Scotland and um, it cost me around 15,000 pounds just to pay for my tuition fees, uh, excluding rent and such things. So um, it's very uh, affordable to study with us. Also, we are part of a wide network of regional um, mechatronics companies um, because we have a bachelor's program where students are actually working um, in a company while studying. So we have close collaborations with them and it's easier for you to get an internship or um, to write your master thesis for these companies. Um, we have three programs at the moment at the campus come. Uh, I will focus uh, on the mechatronic and cyber physical systems for today. Basically, here you can see a brief overview of uh, the lab facilities we have. So our lab focuses on three key components, additive manufacturing with laser sintering processes, uh, material jetting, filament printing, rapid prototyping and such. Um, the next lab is focused on robotics, uh, where we are dealing with virtual reality, industrial robots, autonomous systems, um, subjects that are already taught in the program itself. And you can uh, put your theoretical uh, experience from your lectures into the practice because we have a student lab as well. Um, the last lab we have is an optimization lab with uh, drive technology, uh, control regulation, 3D scanners, measurement technology, for instance. Uh, we are currently setting up a fourth lab as well, which will be focusing on sensors. Uh, this will take us about two years, and then you can study on um, artificial intelligence and sensors as well, into uh, put it into the practice, basically, your theory. Uh, you might ask yourselves, for starters, what is a cyber physical system? So it can be abbreviated as CPS. You might read that online. Um, and here I put a general definition uh, of what you expect from cyber physical systems. So it, uh, these are integrations of computation, networking, and physical processes. Embedded computers and networks monitor and control the physical processes with feedback loops where physical processes affect computations and vice versa. So basically, um, a whole new future physical world uh, opens up, including machines, equipment and devices networked with the virtual world of the Internet or the cyberspace. You can find cyber physical systems in your everyday life even. Uh, it's just that we don't recognize them as such. Um, for example, when you're driving with your car um, and your navigation system um, warns you that there will be a traffic jam waiting just around the corner, um, then this is a cyber physical system actually. Or at home, if you have a cleaning robot, this is a cyber physical system, smart heating, smart lightning. In the medical sector, um, there are pacemakers, insulin pumps created from those mechatronic and cyber physical systems. In the energy sector, we can find windmills and smart grids, for example, or transportation sector, e-bikes, motorized scooters or stepways even. Um, this is an overview of, of our uh, study program. So basically, this is a master's program. Um, and regularly, you can study up to three semesters with us. Um, most of our international students, actually, they decide to go on a bit longer to study. So you can study up to five semesters even. Or if you are uh, choosing to go for two sabbatical semesters in order to absorb an internship, then you might even end up studying seven semesters, if you so wish. But the regular study period is at three semesters. Um, we have a very high demand uh, amongst international students. Um, we receive around 1,800 to 2,000 applications per year. So it's very hard, of course, to decide for us whom to choose. That's why we have um, initiated a um, suitability uh, admission test, basically in order to uh, recognize the students who are aptable for the program. And this is done by um, ProctorU, which is an American uh, institution. And uh, there will be an ass assessment test, including around 30 questions of very general basic things you need to know before you can start your master's program. And that helps us to decide among those applicants. You can also find a sample um, examination sheet um, on our website, for example. 
And currently we have students from approximately uh, 25 different nations around the world. Now, um, this study program is divided into four technolo uh, technologically oriented uh, units and two interdisciplinary units. So we uh, uh, have modern advanced uh, simulation systems awaiting, cooperative and autonomous systems, including advanced robotics, uh, virtual augmented reality, human machine interfaces, and additive manufacturing processes. All of this you can also implement in our lab, for instance, because we have a lot of case studies where you actually implement the theoretical knowledge you gained into the practice. Um, you are put into a group of students and then you need to work on a project which is actually of relevance to us. So, for example, if one of our robots is missing um, sort of a, an arm or, or if we need a certain function to, uh, for the robot to have, then uh, we have a, a group of students and you actually work on a project that is meaningful and is used in the future. Um, and then we also have functional security because everything you do needs to be um, up to the security standards, of course, and cyber physical systems. Um, this program actually, um, after completing this program, you are can do a PhD, for example. Some of our alumni um, have decided to go for a PhD or to go into the industry straight away. That uh, is up to you. Uh, why you should study this program, um, actually um, intelligent systems will enable uh, you to work in the so-called industry 4.0 or the smart factory. Um, we can already see that robots are conquering the digital world. Um, you can see it in the health sector, for instance, with robot assisted um, nurses or surgical procedures, because uh, a lot of medical staff is uh, missing at the moment. We don't have the staff, so we need robots in order to support staff, which is missing. Um, then we can see fast paced development uh, with major topics such as uh, virtual reality, autonomous driving, ambient assisted living. This will define our future. And so in order for these big challenges to be tackled, we also need qualified staff to do that. So we want to qualify you to work in this world of the 4.0. And the increasing age of digitalization, of course, is changing the way we work and also new professions will be created along the way. Um, our study program uh, does not include a compulsory internship, such as in the bachelor's program, but lots of our students, they uh, go for voluntary internships. Uh, and we have the practical elements of case studies, as I mentioned before. Um, they are integrated in four out of seven modules, so you can see a very high percentage of our modules are practical oriented. And uh, this all goes beyond the theoretical knowledge because you can put it into practice what you learned. And it's very important to have uh, the best of both worlds in order to be able to match what employers seek. Um, then we also have a compulsory technical elective subject. We have a catalog of subjects where you can choose from uh, what you want to pursue or what you want to deepen. Um, at the moment, for example, we have programming languages uh, like Python and C++, or um, we have uh, quantum computing. Um, further topics include Industry 4.0, the digital factory. So everything you can imagine under the sun, which is uh, according to the needs of the program, you can study by side uh, as uh, in this technical elective subject, basically. And if one is not enough for you, you can also choose to um, absolve more of those as a voluntary achieve uh, achievement. A lot of our programs are actually also provided by the Virtual University of Bavaria, if you're interested. And uh, here you can see the study content. So we are starting with structures and functions of cyber physical systems, as well as business models. You will have advanced robotics, car bridge systems, and your first case study even, where you are put into groups and you study uh, on a real time project. Um, in your second semester, you will have virtual reality, HMI, additive manufacturing, where you can gain an insight into additive manufacturing into our own laboratory, for example. 
and the technical elective. And in your third semester, you only have two subjects because you need to focus mostly on your master thesis and your master colloquium, so the oral presentation of your thesis. Um, basically, you might ask yourselves now, what do I need in order to apply? Um, well, you need a bachelor's degree in a relevant subject area. It doesn't have to be mechatronics. It can be mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, anything related into this field. And you have to have at least 210 credit points. 180 is also fine if you have practical work experience and internships. Then uh, you might gain up to 30 credits and then you end up with the 210 needed. Uh, for language requirements, uh, you need a minimum of B2 in English and a minimum of A2 in German. You will have German language courses on campus as well, which are mandatory. And once you have reached A2 level on campus, uh, then the mandatory part is done. And if you would so wish and you want to uh, improve on your German, then you can go on studying B1, B2, German or even C. Um, we also offer consultation sessions as well as taster studies if you're interested. Um, for the application periods, you see uh, two different study locations because uh, the program was so popular in CAM that we decided uh, to start it on Deckendorf main campus as well. So for the summer semester, um, the program always starts in CAM and the application period is already on uh, starting as of 15th of November this year and ends by uh, 15th of January next year. And for the winter semester in Deckendorf in the next year, the application starts as of 15th of April next year uh, to 15th of July. Um, you can apply online. You don't need to send us any documents. Everything is done online. You just need to upload CV, motivation letter, um, transcript of records, uh, etc. And uh, for further information, you can always click on the links. And Ms. Mari will be your primary uh, point of contact for any questions regarding your application. Uh, the current fields of work where our alumni are currently uh, employed include uh, many different areas. I just chose the major ones here. So uh, software development, plant special construction, electronics development, control engineering, or system and device development. This list is very long. It's just a selection of uh, major fields we have. Um, you have further career prospects in this field. You can um, work in many different sectors, including automotive, for example, energy systems, medical systems, consumer products, material processing. Um, you can work in customer care as a consultant or in product development. This is very wide ranged. And that's why mechatronics is such a popular study field, because you're not just focusing on one specific area, but uh, you are dealing with computer science, with mechanical engineering, with electrical engineering. So the field of work uh, that awaits you in the future is very vast. And we can see it in our alumni as well. Uh, last but not least, um, this is an overview of our three study programs on the website. Uh, this uh, is our general contact. Um, if my colleague or me are on vacation, then someone will answer under this email here. Um, this is my email address and this is my colleagues. So um, I would already like to thank you very much for your intention. And uh, if there are any questions, I'm very happy to answer them. Thank you very, very much. Uh, actually, the presentation was really interesting because there were follow-up questions and I have noted them all down. So at the end, after our second speaker, I will ask you to participate in this live Q&A. Uh, dear attendees, no question will be lost. I have noted all of them here, so we will discuss them at the end. Right now, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. I will uh, share my screen right now Hi. Nino. yes just um because as i was listening to the presentation and checking the questions uh, many people are asking about specific requirements 
So uh, check out the links, uh, guys, that we posted, me and also Solange, that we posted in Emma, that we posted in the chat, because uh, there you have all the requirements and informations about everything uh, that uh, Paul Legal was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you, Irene. Yep. Yeah, there, there were questions about GPA difference between campuses. So we'll come back to them because maybe some who will join later and uh, will already note down the links. I uh, would also like to discuss them a bit uh, during the live Q&A. All right, uh, let me share my screen. Thank you again. It was really interesting, even if I'm not from the field, <laughs> I was already interested uh, in the topic. And right now, I would like to give the floor to our second speaker, Professor Dr. Raphael Ruf, who is program director and will be talking about a master in science in mechatronics. And here you can see uh, University Ravensburg Weingarten, University of Applied Sciences. Again, to locate it, we have a small map and the outlook of the university on the left side of the slide. So, uh, Professor Dr. Ruf, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I think my video has uh, vanished. So, yeah, I will just start it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can see oh, you. Looks, yeah. good. looks good. Great. Thank you. And then, I will share the screen. And that also works? Uh, yes, but could you make it presenter view so that we see only the slide? Yeah, great. Like so. OK. Thank you. So then uh, once again, uh, thank you. And uh, welcome from Weingarten and Ravensburg, which is kind of a, a joint together um, town. My name is Rafael Ruf, and I will present you some um, information regarding our master mechatronic course. Uh, apologies for these bulky headphones, but I have been uh, at home a long time due to Corona, and today is uh, one of the few days I'm at my office, and uh, these were the only ones I found, uh, but uh, never mind. So um, this will be the outline of my talk. First of all, I will... Uh, tell you something about our university, then about um, study programs. Actually, I will also um, dropping some words regarding a, a second study course. Maybe that's uh, interesting for some people, but um, of course I will focus on uh, mechatronics because that's also my course. Um, we will be talking about the admission criteria, um, about the application process, and yeah, finally, um, Q and A um, session. Uh, by the way, I'm accompanied by my colleague uh, Miss uh, Fabienne Damasch, who is working in our uh, admission office, and I think she will also be checking the chat and uh, maybe uh, answering questions uh, while I'm talking. OK, so let's um, start with the first point, the university. So um, yeah, obviously, I don't think I have to tell you much where Germany is located on the globe. It's here. And also, you've been shown the map of Germany, which consists of uh, 16 federal states. And we are located in the state of Baden-Württemberg. I'm not sure if you can see my, my uh, pointer, but um, yeah, this is uh, the state down here. And again, uh, Weingarten is located um, very much to the south of this state of Baden-Württemberg, here um, near the lake of Constance. Constance. And this gives you also a beautiful landscape, as you can see here, and um, many possibilities during your free time. So this is a photo which was taken uh, north of Weingarten. So what you see here in order of appearance is uh, the city of Weingarten, 
with its uh, famous basilica, and then uh, approximately 40 kilometers beyond um, comes the Lake of Constance, which is approximately uh, five kilometers wide on uh, this location. And afterwards, we are already in uh, Switzerland and following are uh, the Alps, um, famous mountains in the south of Germany. Um, yeah, this is our main building, which is uh, comparatively maybe not so impressive like uh, the picture before. Um, our campus in Weingarten with the different buildings. Um, and yeah, they are actually very close together. So you will be having lectures in the different buildings, but uh, the walking times are quite short. And also we have um, quite a few uh, places of accommodation, which are right beside the university. So you can see here, uh, these three here, are uh, places of accommodation. Um, some general facts about our university. We have currently approximately 3,800 students enrolled. We have uh, 113 professors. I think uh, it became already more by this semester. We have uh, four departments. Uh, social work, care and health, technology management, mechanical engineering, and in bold, because that's the one which is uh, responsible for the course we are talking about is electrical engineering and computer science. Um, now, mechatronics is a, a joint study program between um, this department, electrical engineering, and mechanical engineering. So I will have to say some words about this later. In total, we have uh, 23 bachelor courses and 12 master courses available at our university. Yeah, so here um, I provide you with some uh, links that you can check out, so I will not go over them. As you can see, I have quite a couple of slides, so I will. Um, go quickly over some of them. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the study program. As I said, I, I briefly want to present one. Um, electrical engineering and embedded systems and master mechatronics. So um, let's start out with the electrical engineering and embedded systems course. Um, by the way, a lot of these things also apply to master mechatronics, so I can also go quickly over this slide. Um, the electrical engineering and embedded system course aims as a, at a degree of uh, master of engineering. It has a study period of three semesters, and um, that's also the same for master mechatronic. We are always starting in the winter term. And uh, the closing date for your application would be April the 15th. Um, as admission requirements, that's also very similar. You need to have a bachelor degree in electrical engineering, communication engineering, automation or power engineering, with a final grade um, converted to German grading system of at least 2.5. And um, like in the other university which presented before, we need uh, 210 um, European credit points for admission. And you also require an English certificate, which can be either from uh, TOEFL or IELTS. Uh, we do not require any German certificates, although you will be learning German uh, during the course. Um, I will not talk too much about this slide. That's uh, the schedule for electrical engineering. So let's continue right to the mechatronic course. As I said, um, most of the stuff is similar. It's actually a different um, degree. 
Mechatronics uh, seeks to a, a Master of Science degree. But the rest of this is identical. This is a schedule for the mechatronics, so the um, overview of the subjects over the three semesters. But I rather prefer um, this slide here in order to, to show you which uh, subjects are waiting for you in Weingarten and what is kind of special um, with our course. So. As you probably know, uh, mechatronics is kind of a trinity of these uh, three disciplines, which I've shown you here, electrical engineering, computer science, and mechanical engineering. And what I've tried here is to allocate the different uh, lectures and subjects we are teaching uh, to those fields, for example, we have an automation course, which um, relies heavily on computer science and electrical engineering. On the other hand, uh, electrical drives course, for example, is something which is related to mechanical engineering and electrical engineering, of course. Now, what is uh, special with our course is that we take into um, consideration your prior education. So, for example, if you come from the field of mechanical engineering, which uh, a lot of our students do, what we do is we will um, remove some of those subjects which are related to mechanical engineering because uh, we suppose that you already had these topics. And um, we will more concentrate on the electrical engineering and the computer science part. So each new student that arrives with our university receives um, his or her own personal timetable where we, um, together with the student, make out which um, subjects are most appropriate for your um, study career. Um, there are some subjects which I was not able to fit to these three, so things like uh, advanced mathematics, the scientific project, which is a practical work that you need to do in the second semester, and of course, um, the master thesis which will be um, conducted in the last semester, and also the German courses. Uh, what you see here is uh, the compulsory subject. And in the next slide, I have um, just a brief excerpt of uh, optional subjects that we offer. Now, these could also come from different departments and other courses. So, yeah. I will not go into too much detail regarding these courses. As I said, just a brief uh, excerpt of the possibilities. And you can see um, more of these subjects uh, on our homepage, if you like. Um, I also like to present you contents of uh, two selected lectures. And uh, these are actually the lectures that are given by myself. Um, the first one is uh, the lecture automation, where um, we will be heavily working with microcontrollers of um, the ARM Cortex origin. And as a manufacturer, we have picked STM. So in this course, Every student receives at the beginning a uh, board like that uh, with your own um, microcontroller. And we also have these extension boards that we will be sharing. And during the course, you will be able to uh, develop uh, a lot of uh, real world application. So, um, yeah, the contents are listed here. I will not be um, reading everything out, but uh, 
the focus of this course is definitely on this lower part here. So this is what I like to teach you because this is what you need later in the industry. You need to um, be confident with some software patterns for developing typical embedded automation software. And for that purpose, I've uh, picked these three here as an example, which uh, uh, find wide application, interrupt-driven superloop approach, uh, commercial real-time operating systems, and we will also develop our own small um, real-time operating system. Uh, there is one bullet I missed here, and that is a finite state machine. So this will be the course automation. And closely related to that course is my second course that I'm teaching. Um, it's called Process Interface Equipment. And you could also call this um, like sensors and actuators. As you can see here, this is a major part of this um, lecture, but it would not be complete. Um, Process interface equipment also um, takes into account interfacing of signals to process control systems, signal classification, and things like measurement amplifiers. So usually um, this may sound a little bit awkward at first, but um, I think it's a very well matching term for this lecture. And as you can probably see, this is uh, the counterpart to this lecture. So after attending these two, you will be hopefully very confident in uh, developing uh, embedded systems with the regarding uh, sensors and actuators and the necessary wiring. Um, yeah. This I already told uh, you, uh, at least most of it. So yeah, I, I showed you the compulsory subjects. And it's possible to skip some of them if you had a similar lecture in your bachelor course already. Um, regarding the optional subjects, you are completely free to choose them. And there is a list that is uh, offered with the beginning of every semester. Um, unfortunately, um, you may not take subjects from our bachelor courses because these are not um, seen as being equivalent to a master course. And um, in total, you need to gain 90 ECTS uh, during your study. So that makes um, 30 credits per semester, which is a usual value. And this includes the master thesis with 25 ECTS. So let's go to the next um, part of the agenda. And this is um, criteria, selection criteria by the university. So um, again, I will briefly start with the electrical engineering and embedded system course. Uh, you require a completed diploma or bachelor degree in electrical engineering, communication engineering, automation, or power engineering with at least a grade of 2.5 and 210 credits. Um, this course is special in the sense that it also requires um, prior knowledge in one of these fields. So hardware description language, which can be either VHDL or Verilog, and um, at least one object-oriented programming language has to be known, like C++, Java, or I guess Python would also be OK. Regarding the English uh, proficiency that you need, um, either a score of uh, at least 70 out of 120 in a TOEFL test, or um, an overall band score of 6.0 for the IELTS test. 
Um, you may earn some bonuses, so which add, um, or I should say, subtract from your uh, equivalent grade by the following things. Um, proven relevant work experience or research in the field of electrical engineering or electronics of at least one year. So um, one year work experience will be honored by, I guess, 0.3 grade points. And another thing you might do to um, increase your grade would be taking a GRE test where you would uh, require at least a score of uh, 161 in the quantitative reasoning part. That's the only one that is uh, interesting for our um, programs. Again, Mechatronics is uh, very similar. Uh, the prior education could be a little bit different. So of course you are also welcome uh, with a degree in mechanical engineering, um, as well as electrical engineering or computer science. Uh, required grade is the same, as well as the credits, and also the English knowledge. Um, with mechatronics, we don't have any special knowledge required, like those uh, hardware languages that you've seen before. And the bonus, which can improve your grade by uh, 0.6 at maximum, is also exactly the same as with the other study program. Um, final part of the agenda from my side would be the application process, which is really quite straightforward. The only thing you need to go, you need to do is uh, go to this uh, web page, set the language to English if you prefer, and from there on you can start your application process. So that's really simple with our university. Um, and in case you have some problems, or questions, I've added this page here with the um, persons that you might uh, want to contact. First of all, um, the head of studies for the two uh, programs that I've shown you. Uh, these are also responsible for the general study council. So if you have questions regarding um, the content of the programs, so for electrical engineering, that would be my colleague, um, Professor Sigelko. And yeah, MM, that's me. Uh, probably most interesting for prospective students is uh, the admission office uh, with uh, Fabien Damasch, who is also with me today. And uh, I've seen her answering some questions in the meantime. Um, well, examination office is, I would say, interesting. Once you become a student, um, then you would talk to Frau Huber. And in between, maybe Ramona Hermann is a very important person for you as a student, because he, she is concerned with um, international affairs. So she will handle things like accommodation, um, getting to know uh, important locations in Weingarten, setting up with bank accounts and stuff like that. So again, maybe only interesting once you become a student, but then uh, she is uh, very important for you. Okay, um, yeah, I would say this concludes my presentation for today. Thanks a lot for um, attending. And yeah, I will probably have a look at the chat now, which I neglected so far, and see if there are 
some questions that I can answer. Um, you're also free to contact us anytime you like by these addresses. I'm not sure whether I should share this presentation or if this is possible or, or yeah. requested. <coughs> oh, Professor Dr. Ruf, thank you very, very much uh, for such an interesting and in detail presentation. This individualistic approach of creating timetable and uh, so on is really, for, for my case, innovative and interesting because I have never heard about it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think students, um, if you wish to share the presentation for those uh, who registered to our uh, webinar today and maybe could didn't have time to attend it, uh, you are free to share it with us and we will send an email with the presentation so it, it can be done really easily. Uh, and uh, uh, thank you all who were participating in uh, chat. Uh, maybe could you please, um, maybe I could share the screen now if you could stop sharing the screen. Yeah, so meanwhile, I will not to keep the silence. Um, I wrote down some questions and the two speakers are welcome to, yeah, perfect, thank you. The two speakers are welcome to join, join this uh, live Q&A, even though both of the uh, presentations were quite in detail and all the necessary links were already shared or questions were already answered. Let us take two, three minutes to uh, give time to our the questions that I noted them down. So um, regarding uh, for, for Degendorf Institute, um, there was a question about GPA. I saw it was already answered and Professor Ruf has also mentioned 2.5 GPA. Uh, so let me uh, put the question this way. Uh, if the GPA is 2.5 or uh, 2.9 at the lowest. Uh, Professor Ruf has, has already mentioned about this bonus point, but would additional bonus point be given to work experience or internship experience? And for Degendorf, what is necessary minimum uh, GPA? Because I think it was answered in Q&A, but not mentioned during the presentation. Um, in terms of GPA, we don't have a minimum requirement because we have the admission test with PropTU. So basically, um, if students apply to us, then around mid-December, uh, they will get an invitation to this admission test. And then basically the students are sorted out according to their performance in the test. Thank you. Um. Regarding the question about uh, the bonus, uh, it will be given for work experience of at least one year. So you need to have um, a work experience of uh, at least one year. Um, or, um, yeah, relevant scientific work, which will be judged um, on the basis then, so I cannot give any uh, any general information regarding that. Um, yeah, our GPA is uh, two point five, and yeah, as as my colleague from the other university already said, uh, we also receive a lot of applications. And uh, to be honest, um, in the last year, it, last years it was rather like you would have to have something like below 2.0 in order to get um, a good chance for admission. So I think I should add this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and to, uh, from our side, the last question will be about uh, some selective courses. Both of you have mentioned there is that there is a wide um, pool from where to choose selective, selected courses uh, or elective courses. Um, and uh, is it only related to technical subjects or can they be from another discipline? 
because Professor Ruf has also mentioned there that students will be given a list. And also for Degendorf, there was this elective courses were mentioned. So could you please elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, uh, most of our courses actually are technical electives, but we have two examples that are more focusing towards uh, the economical aspect uh, that engineers need to know about. For example, integrated production processes um, offered at the um, University of Nuremberg and uh, product innovation management in emerging markets. These are the two which mostly focus on economical aspects. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, and with us, with us this is uh, very similar. So um, we have some non-technical subjects integrated in the course, um, like for example, a seminar on intercultural sensitization, which is um, very liked by the students, uh, according to, to my feedback. And you may also choose non-technical subjects from other courses, but then I have to say that they will not be graded. So this cannot count um, towards the 90 uh, ECTS that you need to earn. But in case of interest, nevertheless, uh, you are free to, to visit every lecture offered um, by any of the departments at, at our university. Thank you very much. So um, just one last question for um, yeah from uh, for Miss Legal is about the difference between campuses because you have mentioned that due to high interest there was another program opened in Degendorf campus. Is there any uh, difference in terms of teaching or it's absolutely the same program just in two different campuses? Uh, the latter. It's absolutely the same program in terms of content, just the study location is different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you everyone so much once again. I see that all the questions were answered and this is really great. I hope it was really interesting for the prospective students. If any of you has any addition um, from the, the people from the background, Eileen or someone else, you are free to do so. Uh, if not, meanwhile, I will share my screen and show you. Yeah, we already had a very interesting Q&A session. I, and um, I would like to tell you that uh, if we receive the presentations from the speakers, we will uh, be very happy to share it with you as well. You will get, even for those who registered to a webinar but didn't have time or um, maybe some other reasons couldn't attend uh, today's webinar, you will, uh, those people will also receive um, the presentation. Um, and if you still have some questions, uh, the emails to study programs were already shared in chat several times by Eileen, by uh, the program representatives. And you can also see on our um, screen the info email at mygermanuniversity.com and you can send the questions here as well and we will forward to uh, them to the respective programs. Uh, last but not least, uh, we hope that everyone enjoyed the webinar and if, it's, if this is the case then um, Eileen has shared the uh, direct links in a chat so it will be great to have your feedback um, and we will continue doing uh, whatever we are doing right now. So first of all, um, and uh, yeah, I see that all the unnecessary links were shared already. So take your time to copy them and maybe open several tabs so that you can go through them uh, later today. And uh, from my side, I would like to thank everyone for the time and wish you a nice day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you are located in the world. Bye-bye.